Hi, everyone, and welcome. Just getting a few more people coming into the webinar. I'd like to welcome you to our um, webinar on Air Peninsula. Being a South Australian based business, it's very exciting to be featuring one of our state's destinations. South Australia is now open for intrastate travel. So hopefully some of our um, South Australians are getting across to Air Peninsula to help boost the economy with our uh, tourism industry and hospitality industry that's been a little under a cloud since the COVID came in. Uh, my name is Caroline. I've for uh, over 20 years have been organising uh, predominantly inbound tours into Australia for international guests, but also for domestic tourists as well. I have a great passion for Australia and I love selling it. And there's many places that have left a footprint on my heart and Air Peninsula is certainly one of those. Just a quick bit of housekeeping. Um, all of our participants, uh, our guests, I should say, are muted, um, but that doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you. There is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, so please tap in your questions as we go, <coughs> and we'll do our best to get to them um, during the session. If there's any we don't get to, then we promise to follow up after our uh, time talking to our guests. So um, one thing I'm going to... A question we're asked a lot of, and I'll just touch on this before I introduce our panellists. Um, what if I book a trip and borders aren't open? I'm getting asked that a lot. Um, basically, if the borders aren't open, your trip is refunded. We can't expect you to pay for a trip um, that can't happen due to border restrictions and, and COVID calls. So uh, rest assured, uh, you know, if there is any issues with borders, uh, blocking travel opportunities due to the COVID, then uh, you'll get a refund of your deposit or your trip payment. So we're all on the same page on that. It's just too hard otherwise. Okay, we're fantastic for a, a, to have a few people joining us today. First we've got is Craig, um, known as Hassie. Uh, from Australian Wildlife Adventures. That's uh, an overarching um, brand of two tourism businesses that Craig runs that he'll be able to tell us about. And we have Diana Williams. She has extensive experience in media, communications and PR. And uh, part of her CV that I like to read is she loves drinking bubbles and red wine, getting things done, <laughs> an event to remember. So a woman after my own heart, that's for sure. We also have Simon, who's the founder of Wild Diaries with us to, as usual. Okay, um, Hassie, we were just touching on no. a few things before uh, we came on air, and one of those is air access to Air Peninsula. So just give a brief update of where we're at with that at the moment. Yeah, so we're, we're lucky that we have Qantas Link and also Rex flying to Port Lincoln. And up in Sejuna, we have um, Rex flying into Sejuna. Uh, into Wyala, another access point, we have both, again, Qantas Link and Rex. Obviously, the flights have dropped down um, as the demand is there. But from speaking to the state manager of South Australia and Western Australia, they're gradually looking to increase them. And then on the 5th of July, I think there's going to be another announcement more towards, you know, flights in and out every day during the week and some more depart some more flights up to Sejuna as well. So um, understandably a tough time. And I think it's really uh, come home to us just how much we rely on that access to be able to get people across here to show what we've got. What we've got is pretty special, but again, it's just that dis the tyranny of distance of trying to get them across to see it. Yeah. So Air Peninsula is a fairly big place, um, lots of ground to cover and lots of fantastic things to do. So we might touch on a couple of different things. I remember quite a few years ago now, I came over on a familiarization trip that you hosted for us. And uh, there's a few things that really stuck in my memory as, as, as fantastic experiences. And one of those was the electric canal boat tour in Port Lincoln. Can you just give us a little bit of insight into that experience? <laughs> yeah, it is a good one. It's uh, it's called the Tesla, and it um, it goes around the canals of the marina in Port Lincoln. And and the good part about it, it's obviously a very sheltered um, a very sheltered boat ride, but the it's really about trying to understand the industries that make up Port Lincoln and make up the Air Peninsula. You know that the the safe harbour of uh, Port Lincoln. And the marina has really opened up. We've got so many fishing industries that, that that live out of there, that work out of there. So as you go around on the, this little electric boat, um, the operator, the owner is able to tell you about, you know, the different industries, you know, the sustainability of those industries, how they fish. And even part of one of the Tacoma, which is the original boat that's in, in Port Lincoln, where they used to pole tuna with, is actually going up and talking to people about how they did that and then how they pole tuna and it's just a really nice experience easy it's an all-weather experience and it's a great way to understand what makes up port lincoln 
I think one of the analogies I like is that it's, it's just like farming of the ocean. So farming of the land, anyone that enjoys or is a farmer or has interest in farming of the land, yeah. thoroughly enjoy that too, because it's the same thing just related to the ocean instead. So, yeah. It is good. It is good. Now, Diana, obviously just talking about the fantastic seafood in the area, obviously that's a big highlight for the region and there must be some amazing food and wine opportunities uh, on Air Peninsula for guests to experience. There are, and I think it's it's really important to remember as much as we can celebrate the seafood that we have here, there are also, for those non-seafood eaters, there's also some delicious, um, you know, grass-fed beef and the lamb and pork that we have here as well. Um, but seafood is definitely the, uh, the feature on the menus. There are a number of commercial uh, restaurants as, uh, here that um, are able to access the freshest seafood and so therefore every time you come to one of the hotels or the restaurants or the fish, you know, the fish places here where you can buy it yourself, you're guaranteed to absolutely have the freshest product that comes directly from the ocean that um, surrounds this incredible region. Yeah. And there's a few great wineries as well now, I believe. There are. So there, um, there are three active vineyards here or the three, three point. 3.8 maybe there's two little ones that um, make up a, a, a very important part of this but they um, are certainly very small boutique ones but there's Lincoln Estate, Boston Bay Wines and Peter Tickle Wines so the three of them produce some um, some pretty amazing wines from here some reds but also the um, the whites that come from this region are award-winning the Riesling and the, the Sauvignon Blanc Semillon so they're perfect that go with our delicious um, seafood any time of the year. Sounds spectacular. And do they all have cellar door experiences for guests? Uh, Lincoln Estate and Boston Bay currently do. Um, Boston Bay is um, overlooking the ocean here, so it's a, just a short, probably four k's from the town of Port Lincoln. Lincoln Estate is a little further out, but they do have a um, an amazing animal park and and cafe and things for um, families. So it's a great experience out there. That all ties into their cellar door experience. And Peter Tickle Wines are currently in the process of building um, a cellar door that um, obviously with these COVID restrictions, I'm not sure when that will be open, but um, there are certainly three different winery experiences that you can have here within a 25K radius of Port Lincoln. Fantastic. Wonderful. The other great thing, particularly for our international clients, Hassi, is um, some of the wildlife on uh, Air Peninsula. And I, yeah. in some ways, it rivals Kangaroo Island, I think, as a destination to see wildlife. And another memory I have from my trip with you was... Um, the Mikara Station koala experience, which to me is probably the, one of the most amazing ones in the whole country due to the fact that koalas are so easily visible in the Manigans. They are, and it's a great story as well. Um, you know, there's six koalas brought in and, and there's lots of koalas there. Now, probably, I, think, I think the last count there's about 135, 140. It's a very safe environment. So the koalas are really quite comfortable that you're getting, getting um, not so much touching, but getting really close for... You know, everyone's going for a selfie, etc. these days. But the koalas are just there. They're really comfortable. The other day we went out on a tour and we had this koala just walking. You know, it's, it's been put up on our Facebook, but it's actually walking 25, 30 metres just slowly past us. And we had one experience with Bet, the lady that owns it, that after the fires went through, we, we were out showing some people the koalas. At the bottom of this tree, there was a koala with burnt pads and, you know, on, on the feet and the hands. And we saw it there and, and bet, you know, every day went down, gave it water, gave it some fresh leaves, et cetera. And that's, that koala gradually came back and took off. And we were camping there one particular night and this koala walks over, jumps on one of our guide swags and then up into the tree. You know, you'd, you'd like to think it was that koala, but they are really friendly. It's a great, it's just great viewing. I don't know anywhere else where you can see koalas like that in the wild and you are guaranteed to see them. And, and even with their babies hanging off them, yeah, it's a really, it's a really nice, easy experience, and people love it. Yeah, it's a good one. Do you want us to give us a little bit of uh, information uh, for those listening about the two different styles of tours that you offer in the region? Sure. One of our, our budget product is called Nullarbor Traveller, and that's a really raw youth product. It's not so much youth based, but it is sleeping in swags. Um, that product goes between not only around the Air Peninsula, but between Adelaide and Perth and Perth and Adelaide back. 60 departures a year uh, between Adelaide and Perth. And we also do about 35 departures around the Air Peninsula at that budget range product. So 
it's raw, it's, um, it is camping, it's sleeping in swags and it, it's for those really adventurous that want to sleep under the stars and just get that real Australian experience. Explore Air is my small group, private and even some luxury tours that we do in Western Australia. But on the Air Peninsula, it's small group and private tours. We actually do a day tour in Port Lincoln. So people can fly in, they can do in one day the best part of Port Lincoln. On another day, the following day, they can do the best part of Cochrane Bay. So we have a couple of day tours and then we have some packages, which includes flights. We've got a JAG, opera, a, a person that operates a, a Jaguar, sorry, not a JAG. Um, and we pick them up from our hotel in Adelaide. They fly across to Port Lincoln. They spend three days with us in Port Lincoln. And then we do the best of, of the region that we can do in that area. And then we fly back to Adelaide. Same as coming into winter now, the whales at the head of the bite are amazing. So to be able to take people up there, same thing flying into Sejuna and to see the whales, to go out and to be in a boat in these southern right whales, which are unlike other whales, so they don't move very much. They tend to just stay in one place. And and so you can actually, obviously, you keep your distance, but the operator up there is really, really good. And they know his boat. They're comfortable with the sound of his boat. And they just sit there. And it's just a really great viewing. And then, obviously, head of the bite to be able to do a scenic flight over the, the Bunda Cliffs it is just a phenomenal cliff. And, you know, the, the head of the bite is a place that I think in Australia that should be the premier lookout spot. And it's hard to paint a picture, but if I could paint this picture, it would be on the on the right-hand side, you see these 120-metre-high Bunda Cliffs. And on the left-hand side, you've got the creamier sand dunes, like someone just poured a, a tub of cream over the top of these sand dunes. And you stay there, and there is a real feel about the place. And, and obviously, during winter, there's whales there, which is even better. But the whales are a bonus. This lookout is just amazing. So we're lucky to have that in our backyard and to be able to show people, you know, this as part of what we do. Yeah, amazing. Um, I guess the region's also a great self-drive destination. So, Diana, you might be able to give us some perspective if someone's towed a caravan over or just, you know, jumps in their vehicle and heads across to Air Peninsula for a week or two. What are some of the top things they should consider doing or tours they should day tours or experiences they should consider joining while they're there? Um, I think there's, as you say, there's a lot of self-drive um, uh, visitors that do come here. But I think as much as the tours and everything that Hazzy's talking about and some of the other operators do here, they will take you to the secret spots and down that little road that um, you may not have either been courageous enough to go on your own. But we certainly do encourage people to come here for extended periods of time and actually do go to go to the local shop, get some lunch, pack a picnic, take a bottle of wine if you want to or a bottle of water, whichever it may be, <laughs> bubbles for me, of course. Um, but actually head out. I mean, within, within 40 minutes, you can be out of Port Lincoln and looking at either the most spectacular beaches that Hazzy was referring in Coffin Bay or from Port Lincoln National Park, have a picnic on the beach. And if there's someone there, get back in your car and your caravan and drive another five kilometres and there is an equally beautiful beach and no one on it. I mean, we've got, what is it, Hazzy, 2,000 kilometres of coastline here. Yep. Um, and there's, there's something for everyone. You don't need to just be the... Um, the adventure seeker you can actually do land-based or water-based activities or a mixture of both um and really get to do that you know get your feet in the ocean and and feel what it's like here on an oyster tour or equally walk along the cliffs that has was referring um and even if it's a rugged cold freezing day just the sound of that ocean is absolutely amazing it's it is a long way to come if you are doing the drive but I always say to everyone, it's worth every single kilometre to get here. Every single kilometre. I see one of our listeners has asked a question. They're not keen on flying. Um, is there options from, I'm guessing from Adelaide, they didn't exactly say where they're from, but from Adelaide for pickups and transfers? Yeah, it's, it's interesting in that we, we do do tours like we do. Explorer comes out of Adelaide, comes through the Flinders Ranges and down to Port Lincoln. Um, but we're also looking at with the flights now being unable to be able to no flights on the weekend, we're actually looking to start a shuttle that comes from Adelaide, comes out on a Friday, etc., goes into Whaler, gives people the opportunity to swim with cuttlefish and, 
And when you mentioned, Caroline, about wildlife before, I, I never really touched on the sea lions, the dolphins, mm. the other things that we do. But right now, you can go to Wyala and you can swim with cuttlefish. And yeah, the water's cool, but in a wetsuit, it's not so bad. But to see these cuttlefish, it's their colours are electric and it is an amazing experience. And nowhere else in the world does this happen. And there is just not one or two cuttlefish. There is hundreds of cuttlefish. And you just walk out into the water, you put a snorkel on, you need no special skills, and you can actually see this. So we're really starting to say, how can we, a lot of our business was international. So how can we say more domestically, we can get you there on the way we can swim with cuttlefish, and then we can take you down to Port Lincoln for other activities, whether it's joining our day tour, cage diving with great white sharks, whether it's actually going out swimming with sea lions, coming up a bit further, swimming with sea lions and dolphins out of Beards Bay, or going to the head of the bight, seeing the southern right whales. All of those are great opportunities which we try to offer people. Yeah, so the, pretty much the answer is yes, we can get you across there by road. It's just a case of working with us to make it happen. Yep, sounds awesome. Caroline, yeah. I just, that I probably... just, oh, sorry. I just, I just having a look at, at the ABC online. In 2013, the number of cuttlefish dropped to a record low of 13,500 um, and rose to 125,000 uh, in 2017. So and I don't believe that's in about a six kilometre section of beach. They're back. Yeah. <laughs> so as so you can gather as well, there's a fair chance we'll see koalas. What was that, sorry? I was going to say, as you can see, there's a fair chance we'll see the cuttlefish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's all. Sounds like a few people are listening have done that, so and they were very impressed, which is fantastic. So that's a good recommendation. Good. Um, wonderful, uh, Diana. What you're involved in organising events and things? Are there some major festivals over on Air Peninsula people could put in their diary and head to? There are. I think everyone will remember um, uh, or recall the Tunarama Festival, which happens over traditionally over the Australia Day long weekend here in Port Lincoln. Um, it started as a blessing of the. Um, uh, the fleet for the fishing that would, you know, the fleet that would go out. Um, it has changed over the years uh, to a food and wine festival it is now where the best of Air Peninsula produce is showcased. It's normally held over, um, as I said, the Jan um, January Australia Day long weekend over three days, but there are certainly lots of activity that happens either side of that as well. Um, we have, um, to, normally we have a long lunch that's held in May, so that's been postponed. Hopefully we'd like to do something in October. Um, there's the Oyster Fest that happens up in Sejuna, which is on the um, long weekend. Coffin Bay also does a food and wine um, weekend, but there's always little things that are popping up. Yeah. One of the other things for people that are not, if they're not particularly interested or not seafood lovers, there's certainly been an increase in silo art and a lot of um, art on a lot of the side of um, old buildings and hotels and things, particularly in Tumby Bay. Um, that may not sound like everyone's cup of tea, but it is definitely worth coming and having a look. There are some incredibly talented people that are here. Everyone knows all over the country people are doing um, amazing silo art, but it is quite extraordinary when you're driving down the highway and just the, the colours and the images on these silos is is quite spectacular. So there's certainly from Kimber, um, Tumby Bay, not sure whether there's any further up the absolute west coast, um, but yes, whether there's a, a an art festival that happens in Tumby Bay right through to the Tunarama Festival, there's something for everyone. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. So we've put together an itinerary um, for the, um, to run in September, board all things being open for us, um, with uh, arriving in Port Lincoln and departing from uh, Sejuna. Um, can you just give us a little brief rundown of some of the key experiences? Well, I know we've touched on a few of them on, on that. Uh, yeah. that so, so what we're trying to do is in that with that um, experience is to be able to just show you case the western part um, of the Air Peninsula. So you'll come into Lincoln, you'll do the activities in and around Port Lincoln, the Mikura Koala, Whalers Way, the oldest rocks in South Australia, and it's a spectacular lookout. And then we'll spend that day really focusing also on the food and the wine. Um, next day it's up to Coffin Bay, and then we start, we go out on an oyster lease and learn about these these famous Coffin Bay oysters. 
and have a pair sampling I might add at the same time. And then we head further up the coast, call into, I've got a, an accommodation place called Kudley Park, call in here, have a look at our beach and, and we do a wildlife and spotlighting night gazing tour just to show people the southern sky, the skies and some of the, the different things in the sky that people may not have seen. And out here is just brilliant for stargazing. Then we'll head down further to Beards Bay. Uh, we'll swim with sea lions, we'll swim with dolphins. Uh, then we head up to Sejuna, stop in Sejuna. Again, a lot of local flavours, a lot of local food, local produce. Also going to the, the local places that, ex, you know, Streaky Bay, there's a really nice um, bay function, which is just a cafe, but serves fantastic fresh local seafood and local produce. Then we go up to Sejuna, stop in some five-star cabins in Sejuna, head out the next day out to Fowler's Bay, go see the, and, you know, go on a whale tour, see the southern right whales up close, learn about, again, a lot of the operators we go out with, it's, it's an amazing experience, but at the same time, you, 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 you become like sponges. You absorb so much that they're telling you and you learn so much. And, and one of the things just before we sort of get to the end of the tour is to, is to make sure they leave with lots of information and they've had a great time. So, once we get off the boat, we can go up to ahead of the bite. They can do a scenic flight over the Bunda Cliffs. Again, get to that lookout where I actually ask people to leave their cameras behind and then just go down and just feel there's something really special about the head of the bite lookout. I encourage everyone on a self-drive or a caravan to actually go in there and have a look. Then we come back to Sejuna, have our last fresh sample of local produce, and then we fly back to Adelaide and transfer back to the hotel. So... We're pretty excited to be partnering up. Um, I'll do the tour myself. May have some assistance depending on the numbers that we have with us. But it's just going to be a great five days to be able to showcase between Port Lincoln and right up to the head of the bite and leave people with a real wow factor to say that this air peninsula is pretty special. And that's what we aim to do. Yeah, sounds amazing. Caroline, I think also from a food perspective, if I can, I think, has he rightly said, a lot of the operators, um, you know, they really get you into their backyard and, you know, knowing the names of the dolphins is quite an extraordinary thing, but they're really so used to all of that. But from a food perspective, I think a lot of people come here and the people who work in the restaurants or those people, those fishermen that they interact with, it's the little life lessons that they learn of, you know, everyone used to throw out the mussels if they weren't open when they were cooking them, you know, and you sometimes you'd end up wasting half the bag. It's not that there's anything wrong with them that you learn. It's, it's just that they're a little bit more stubborn to open. Yep. Yep. And so, and, you know, peeling prawns and deveining them and why the oyster is the way it is and learning that we actually shouldn't have oysters at Christmas time because it's the worst possible time for the oyster. All of those little things that people learn and the operators are gracious um, to share that knowledge. I, I always feel like people go home that little bit richer and next time they're doing a dinner party, they impress everyone with the knowledge of I know how to shuck my own oyster or watch me peel this prawn with such ease. Um, little snippets that, you know, are all the part, as has he said, we, uh, we like to do things properly over here. And I think those are the take home lessons as well as the memories. And I think that's a great point because that's what about tourism is about great experiences, learning, um, learning from the locals, visiting the locals. And that's what's so important. And, and just, you know, you can make friends for life as well with, and connections, you know, with the people Absolutely. that you meet. And the recall of doing something, yeah. you know, every time you, you shuck an oyster, it reminds you all that taste of, you know, I, we always joke and say when you see, you know, other markets, I'll say, um, that wash their oysters out, you know, get rid of that revolting brown water, whereas we, you know, hang on to that. That's seafood liqueur, as we joke and call it, you know. That's seawater, but it's our pristine seawater. So, yeah, it's definitely um, those little things that they'll remember. Yes, so, I thought of... and sorry, Carolyn. Air Peninsula is referred to as the as the seafood capital of Australia. Uh, Diane, yeah. what's your perspective on that? Why why has it got that title? I think the two thousand kilometres of coastline, the pristine waters, but I I also think it's really important to acknowledge the fishing practices, the sustainability practices that the fishermen have here is extraordinary, and it is definitely. Um, 
more prevalent now, but it has certainly been going on for generations. There are a lot of things like the prawn industry. I mean, they've got international MSC certification. That is the highest that you can possibly get. It's great then to be able to have a, a tagline that it is the seafood capital that we can, you know, hang our, hang our hat on. And I think they really walk the talk. Once people try the seafood for the first time, even if they're not a lot, I've seen many, many times, and Hazzy, I'm sure you've done the same thing, when people look at you and say, don't even come close to me with that fresh oyster, that natural oyster, I'm not eating it. <laughs> By the time they've tried just one, you can pretty much guarantee they'll um, they'll be ready to come back for more. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing. So... Uh, Simon, I think it, you know. In short, it's the it's the beautiful pristine waters we've got, but it's also the way that you know people do look after it. Yeah, brilliant. Thank yeah. you. And just just further just further to that about the prawns as well, we're lucky that the the Spencer Gulf prawn industry is a big prawn industry in Port Lincoln. We've got one out of Venus Bay and the West Coast prawn fishery, and and that's the deepest fishery that goes down fifty meters, mm -hmm. and the others are a lot shallower of that, and and it's really good to be able to take a pristine prawn from the Spencer Gulf straight off of um, one of the prawn fishermen and actually come up and meet the owners of the one up, up here in Venus Bay and actually to taste the difference. And, yeah. you know, believe it or not, there is a difference. They're both fantastic, yeah. but there is a real difference in the prawn. So, and, and that's yeah, the journey yeah. I think everything we try to do, we actually try to share that journey. And I, I, I use this analogy a lot with what I do is, what I love about it is actually I can take people to a cliff where there's no one else and we stand there and we can, we can actually get immersed in that where we are. So we can actually let the stresses wash away. We can let, and we can just slow our lives down and relax. And, and for me as a, as a tour operator, my enjoyment is then being able to look over at that person and just see them completely captivated by the view and just, you know, and actually giving them a chance to just sit down and relax sometimes it's not just about going flat out and punching as much as you can do sometimes to just sit there we're, we're lucky that we have two things that mesmerize us is the ocean and we've got an amazing ocean the other one is the bush te the bush te uh, television which is a campfire so if we can get people around those and start to slow their life down they, they leave better people and they've had a fantastic experience and i think the air peninsula does shoot above its weight when we try to make sure that we deliver a premium product in every aspect of what we do and it's important that we try to punch above our weight you're muted simon Sorry, a bit, all of the uh, the screens just changed. I just worried that we had a, a, a glitch in the uh, in the internet there. Um, has he, um, there was a question about uh, uh, trips uh, across the Nullarbor. Obviously, Air Peninsula is a gateway for this. Um, yeah. What's that? So, so there are opportunities for people, aren't there, to to explore that whole region from Adelaide to Perth? Um, do you see the the, the Nullarbor as kind of an extension of the Air Peninsula, or is it something very different? Look, I think it's a big part of what we've got. So, yes, there is, to, to answer the first question, we do a camping tour across there and we also do a three-and-a-half-star accommodator trip. Again, the, the camping one is scheduled departure, same as the the, the accommodator one is. We're going to do once a month across for the accommodator one, but it's about building the demand as well. The Nullarbor is, it suffers, in my opinion, from a from a very bad rap because of the name, you know, Nullarbor, Nullis, Latin, no trees, etc. But that's only... A small section of it. I think if we think about Australia, Australia is very north-south. If we go from Sydney up the east coast, the, the coastline changes in colour, but it doesn't change significantly. But if you come from Sydney across, you've got the Blue Mountains, you've got the Hay Plains. So whenever you go across Australia, either at the bottom or up the top, you actually find the real diversity of the landscape. When we come from Adelaide, the Flinders Ranges, the Eyre Peninsula, the Great Australian Bight, the Nullarbor, then we go down to the beaches of Esperance, then the rock formations of Albany into the wines of, of Margaret River. And along the way, it's about sharing the journey and the experience. So when they arrive in Adelaide, in whichever form they've done, a camping or an accommodator do, they arrive and they say, wow, again, we've just seen a pretty special part of Australia. So there is many opportunities. And obviously we'd love to have people on board to showcase that destination. 
but people from Perth could also join you on a trip back across to our peninsula um, by land as well yeah. if you wanted to. Yeah, they do. So one thing about going so far across is you actually got to come back. So, um, so yeah, whenever there is a tour going in one direction, there's a couple of days off in Perth to be able to recharge, to be able to get everything back ready again. And then we do a departure from Perth back to Adelaide. Same journey, etc., but then back to Adelaide. So, yes, in both directions, it is available. Excellent. Thanks, Hassie. Now, one thing I was going to touch on, um, you used to be a publican, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's correct, yes. I um, I had the Port Kenny Hotel from 93 to 98. It was a great experience. But yep. um, a bit like most publicans, you, you start drinking too much, gambling too much and socialising too much. So I bought Coodley Park, which is my home now and accommodation facility, and it's where we base all our activities. So, yep. yes, I did have a hotel and there's many experiences, I'm sure, that um, should remain in the hotel. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you might. <laughs> that Port Kenny Hotel well, could talk. No. It could, yeah, if it could. I'm sure there's... For not, anyone, though, I mean, it's a really cool little pub in the middle of, you know, not much. I mean, Port Kenny is another great place that Hazzy was referring with the with the prawns. And I think that's another thing that when people are traveling you know long distances there are some characters that you will meet whether has is the publican or not there are definitely some small little places it's like you know the bakeries that you come across you know air is the size of tassie so there's a fair amount of uh road to travel but certainly a nice cold beer or a pasty or a pie along the way fantastic yep, that is very very true and and it's also about me showing introducing the people to those local characters as well so yeah. yeah it is good the other thing we haven't probably touched on as well is we've got a world-class indigenous arts and culture center in Sejuna. like mm -hmm. um to go to go up there and to take people in there to see indigenous ladies painting to see a world-renowned uh, indigenous artist who spends nine months to do one painting to see him there and to see his painting sold as soon as he finishes them and, and to see him and just talk to him and just, you know, we, we are really lucky and blessed. So we haven't even mentioned yet the Gula Ranges. You know, we've got a great national park. So Air Peninsula's got coastline, it's got national, it's got outback, it's got seafood, it's got local produce, it's got wine, it's got food, and it's just got an abundance of wildlife. And, and that's what we try to show with our tours. Wonderful. And on that point, it's a good time to wrap up. And I think that the key message is get yourselves over there, join a tour, experience it, meet some of the locals, enjoy the seafood and the bubbles and the other wine. And um, <laughs> I'd like to, very much like to thank uh, Hassie and Diana for joining us today. It's been yes, fantastic. Thank, and thank you very much. Amazing how quickly the time goes when you're just thank chatting you about a destination that's got so much to offer. Make me want to move there. No, thank that's right, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks very, thanks very much, guys. No thanks worries. For Stay safe. Thanks everyone for tuning in, and uh, we'll be following up with the uh, the itinerary for the Air Peninsula tour. We hope to have departing in September for those that are interested. If we fill that one, we can certainly run a, a second one, uh, no problem at all. So thanks, guys, and enjoy. Bye. Uh, cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.